Oracle Cloud Procurement. Hi, my name's Scott Walls, and in this video, you're gonna learn all you need to know about Procurement Cloud. That's Oracle's procurement applications. So let's get started. Okay, slide one, what is Procurement Cloud in Oracle Cloud ERP? Well, the term Procurement Cloud refers to the source to receipt applications within Oracle Cloud. So notice not source to settlement. Settlement is part of a sub-ledger applications is a part of the offering called FinCloud or Financials Cloud. Slide two, what is the procurement functional area? So you may remember back in the Oracle Cloud Foundation's free course on Panamere, we talked about how all these apps are organized from pillar all the way down to transaction. So here's functional area, it's in that taxonomy, if you will. Within procurement, the apps are largely one-to-one -to, -one to the transactions, and you see nine of those apps roll up into the procurement functional area. Now, you really also have portal, you have supplier registration, so you have some other, really they are applications, they just don't have a tile in the traditional sense. So in Oracle Cloud, procurement refers to a functional area or offering, but the functional area, the applications are used to acquire goods and services. Slide three, what does the supplier's application do in Oracle Cloud ERP? So look, the next 10 of these slides are really gonna tell you who does what transaction in each application. So we'll start with suppliers. Here, this application allows buyers to create and update suppliers and to merge suppliers. And just a hint, you can also do this for sub consultants. So you don't need something like Cognibox. So there's another video coming on that as well. Or if you wanna know more about it, then just click the link below and we can chat about it. Okay, so slide four here. What is the purchase requisitions application do in Oracle Cloud ERP? Well, this allows requesters to create and update requisitions as well as view requisitions. So you can see the 2024 or five update, excuse me, for responsive self-service, this is the new look and feel. There's also another video that comes that talks about the difference of non-responsive and responsive. Slide five, what does the purchase orders application do in Oracle Cloud ERP? Well, this allows buyers to add and update POs to research suppliers. So here the buyers get a chance to see the suppliers based on some of the data they've done before, based on qualifications, based on business relationships. So it's kind of nice. And they can also do some limited setup. Slide six, what does the My Receipts application do in Oracle Cloud ERP? So we tease everybody and say it's the most complicated application that Oracle has, and it's really quite the simplest, but it allows requesters, and that's important, right? So you have to be the person who created the request. It allows you to create and update the receipts for those PO lines. Uh, so, and you can also obviously view your receipts. Okay, slide number seven. What does the supplier registration application do in Oracle Cloud ERP? All right, so now this allows suppliers or what we'll call proxies to externally register or proxies can internally register, right? So that just means somebody is registering on behalf of the supplier, lots of different reasons for that. And then you can also have external bidder registration as well. So there's some different ways that you can do that, okay? Next up, supplier qualifications. What does the supplier qualification application do in Oracle Cloud ERP? Well, this allows suppliers and an ode to what I said in the beginning, sub consultants, right? If you use it correctly, you can create and update initiatives. You can manage initiatives. So before I go any further, Oracle calls this supplier qualifications, but an initiative can either be meant to qualify, which is a bit more of a binary, um, I ask you answer, as opposed to assess, which is a bit more of a rating. And then there's different ways that you could do that. And it also has, uh, big impact for public organizations, if they use the rule set correctly, they can heavily automate that, even if you're doing an API to SAM.gov or Exeger as well, okay? And again, you really don't need something like Cognibox uh, at this point. All right, so you can manage initiatives, you can manage the qualifications, you can manage the assessments, you can manage the questions, right? You ask the questions to get the answers for those two that I just mentioned. And then you, you really populate the data that we talked about in the purchasing application where the buyer can come in and start to research the suppliers. So that's research suppliers is on here too. All right, 
Slide nine, negotiations. What does the negotiations application do in Oracle Cloud ERP? Well, this allows sourcing specialists to create and update programs. So programs are where you put objectives out monthly, quarterly, annually on spend reduction, what we'll call hard savings, or perhaps even a softer non-numerical value. Um, and then you can also create and update negotiations you can create and update something called deliverables. So deliverables, let's say the easiest example is I'm gonna buy a service and you're gonna do the service for me. And so I want you to give me your, or I want the winner who I award to, to give me a certificate of insurance where my company, the buyer, is named on what they call the deck sheet. That's a, also in slang called a COI, certificate of insurance. So I can create a deliverable to do that with notification. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, and so I, I can then, and, and think about what I said about sub-consultants. Once you've got everybody inside this tool, you, you can really start to farm out a lot of those actions to, to be done nicely. All right, so we're gonna initiate agreements, initiate purchase orders from here as well, right? Because an outcome to that can be an agreement or a PO, um, and I can initiate contract records. Now. Pro tip here, if you have contracts, you don't wanna do your agreements from inside your negotiation. So I have a whole video on contracts or you can click the link below to get some time with me and we can talk about why you do not want to award those from within your negotiation if you're using contracts, okay? It has to do with rolling spend. All right, slide 10, purchase agreements. What does the purchase agreements application do in Oracle Cloud ERP? Well. This allows buyers to create and update POs, to create and update agreements, to manage those deliverables that we talked about a minute ago. Again, I can research supplier and I can perform some limited supplier setup. Obviously that also takes with it all the information. Well, let, me, let me take a step back. An agreement in cloud is a software construct that by and large, enforces the terms and conditions of the actual paper contract, right? So when I say create and update agreements, it, it can do all of those things in that construct from notification to only available to those business units to you know auto sourcing the rec into the PO, right? So there's lots of different things that, that can be done with that, all right? Slide 10, excuse me, slide 11. Uh, what does the catalogs application do in Oracle Cloud ERP? Now, this allows content managers to create and update catalogs, to create and update what they call smart forms. Lots of different reasons from restricting the purchasing categories to adding some extra fields that you need to capture as part of that purchase. These are essential when you are doing your buying channels. So you as a procurement organization should definitely have well-defined buying channels. And these applications are set up to do guided buying. So that you want to make sure you understand smart forms will help a lot with that. Now you can also do what's called an info template. An info template has this grouping mechanism and these fields. And then I can take that template and put it on my smart form very nice and cleanly. Uh, if you want an example of that in a demonstration environment, business cards will do that for you. Then you want to manage what's called the procurement catalog category hierarchy. This is different. And do not be confused or confuse it with the product and services codes on the front end of supplier registration. The PCCH, because who wants to say that word? Procurement catalog category hierarchy. This does a couple different things. You could set your accounting by it. You can do, help build levels into your dashboard reporting where I get a drill on my top 10, or rather I get a listing of my top 10 and I can drill into each on a heat map, right? You can do those things. Um, you can also use this particularly in the responsive uh, UI in self-service procurement where the requesters request. You can start to use that to group different content together, right? So it's really important, all right? So then also you can manage content zones. So this is how you group different um, groupings of content for different audiences, whether that's by business unit, by grouping, per person, what have you. Shopping lists, so this is just items that are linked together. And again, as you move into the 25A UI, so we keep talking about this responsive UI because it's a really big change, um, you can 
mask your shopping list via your categories. So again, if you don't know that, click the quick chat link below. And then lastly, you have some content mappings as well, but all of that is covered within the catalogs application of Oracle Cloud. Now, number 12, the last in the applications, how does the supplier portal application work with the procurement lifecycle? So look, I, I know that a lot of people will argue with me that supplier portal is not an application, but it really is. And, and it's one of the two biggest pieces of value you're gonna get right away when you deploy um, Oracle Cloud. Okay, so here we're gonna talk about that this application allows supplier contacts. So this is individuals outside of our organization. So right now the bell goes off to where you're like, oh, okay. So now I'm not using our labor to be the counterparty to either create or help manage these transactions. What transactions? Well, POs, agreements, shipments, contracts, and deliverables. Now, the contract's still gonna go back and forth, at least when I do it, it goes back and forth by Word document. But for your supplier to be able to come in and see all their data, they can see it there. Now, deliverables, like we talked about earlier, if I gave you a COI deliverable, this is where you'd come through the portal and attach that deliverable. So it's really nice. I don't have to have these things going back and forth. Like it's, it drives me absolutely batty when you have two very expensive ERPs sending paper back and forth. So I'll, I'll make one last comment about that in a second, but you can obviously do invoices and payments, or you can do invoices through here and you can see payments. You can do negotiations or more aptly, you can uh, preview it, you can accept one and you can bid and you can see past bids here. And if you're using all in the tool, which you should be, it drives me nuts when people don't, I can actually see the negotiations when I'm looking to figure out who I, I, I can see your past transactions, excuse me, in um, research suppliers when I'm going to look at your, uh, at who I want to invite to my negotiation or sourcing event, okay? Then there's auctions, which is similar, qualifications, which we talked about a little bit earlier in company profiles. Okay, one last thing before we roll off of this. Look, if, if you really understand how procurement works, one of the biggest pieces that adds huge value I haven't talked about. And so within procurement, there's a free product from Oracle called OBN or Oracle Business Network. And that's a piece of software that connects ERPs. Now, you don't wanna connect every ERP and not every ERP is big enough or modern enough, but if you're doing high volume and particularly if you have a punch out, you wanna run that through OBN. But the quintessential piece of value you wanna get from Procurement Cloud is what we call round trip. So however all these things you do, you wanna rec to come to a PO go out to a supplier electronically so that it can come back electronically so you're not putting invoices in, right? And so there's a staggered way with Portal, a product called IDR that we use in payables. And so there's a whole course on payables, a learning path and IDR is included. Get that at panamir.com. And that round trip is tremendous value. So you're just managing the exceptions of the POs and invoices coming back. Now, it isn't as easy as it sounds. I'm not gonna say that it is, but it is extremely doable. And the value that it adds is, 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 is significant, let's say. Okay, so slide 13, how each of those applications fit within the procurement process. All right, so first, um, when I buy pre-negotiated content, so in your head, think of Amazon, I just see all the different catalogs. So I go in my racking, or what we call self-service procurement. And I put items in my cart, I go to PO once they're approved, and then they get shipped, I fill out a receipt. But what happens if I can't see everything? Not everything's in a catalog. If I want to, anything that you do in RFI, request for information, or you need somebody to propose what it is, I wanna put Oracle in. I, I can't just pick that off and put it in a cart. It's a variable service, it's big. I need you to propose how you wanna do it. Well, then I'm gonna do a non-catalog request. And that's where you see us use a lot of other, uh, a lot of the other applications here. So suppliers register and, and, and assumed within that, if they're in the government, they're going to qualify. Even if it's a, your delegation of government funds, um, you'll use the qualification. Then you may do some non-financial contracts. So whether those are non-financial like an NDA or an MOU, or they're non-financial or in the sense that they're not money, but they're a pre-purchase contract, 
then I might do those in that second step. Then I'm going to go into sourcing or negotiation. Then I'm going to come out to a contract, another kind of purchase contract. And then at that point, I'm either going to put a PL or I might send out a contract. And I might actually do an agreement that is used to create what they call a definitional item. So the item that you see in that self-service procurement, those are most often done using what's called a BPA. And they're what's called definitional items. They're the lines on those BPAs. All right. Now, slide 14 how the purchasing applications fit within the procure to pay process. This is a new way that we try to explain this. Let's just go round robin here. Here's the same things we saw before, but again, this is not procurement cloud. This is procure to pay. So now we're going to go by and let's say in this example, we're going to buy pre-negotiated content, but the same thing would hold. However, we get to a PO out and to some goods being received or services being confirmed. Then our supplier, remember I talked about IDR? So our supplier creates an invoice and that invoice is in a template and it relates to rules defined in the MSA that were part of the onboarding process. Yeah, see how this stuff's all linked together. That's what you do. They get that invoice, comes through in a certain way to a certain email address, auto builds into a validatable invoice or it goes to the person, if it's non-PO, that it needs to so it can be validated, and then it gets paid. And so if you've got procure to pay humming based on how you set up Procurement Cloud, and you may or may not need IDR or OBN, it's not, at least it's, you know, you, you, you can put all of these applications together to really automate this process very efficiently. Okay. So that's the end. This is an overview to a great set of applications called Procurement Cloud. And if you have questions, not surprising, that's great. Reach out to me directly using the link below. Want to know more about any of the applications that I mentioned here in detail? Great. All of them have their own courses as part of two learning paths, basic procurement or advanced procurement. And all the courses and the learning paths are free on Panamere.com. So as I always say, I'll see you in the next video.